بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Today we're going to start a new chapter but before we start a new chapter let us review some of the previous concepts Until now we have learned about the digestive system and the respiratory system We learned that the aim of the digestive system is to provide the body with nutrients while the aim of the respiratory system is to provide the body with oxygen gas of course and rid it from carbon dioxide. Now these nutrients and oxygen gas are destined to go to the body cells where they make energy or produce energy. The question is how are the nutrients and oxygen gas transported to the body cells? This question will lead us to the new lesson which is about the transportation of oxygen gas and nutrients to the organs and in particular about the circulatory system. The first activity of this lesson is the heart and cardiac activity. We're going to learn about the heart and the cardiac activity. We know that the circulatory system is made of the heart and blood vessels. In order to understand the function of the heart, we have to understand its structure first. That's why we're going to start solving the probing the activity, the questions of probing the activity in your book. So I ask you to put your book in front of you and follow with us in the documents and the questions. Let's look at document A, this uh, or document A and B. We have here uh, a, a photograph of a real heart uh, labeled from A to um, H. And, uh, sorry to I and next to it we have a diagram that shows the same heart but labeled names of these parts now question 1 part A they are asking us using document B name the structure shown in document A corresponding uh, to the letters from A to I let's go back to the document and look carefully we can see here there's letter A if you look at the diagram it is called the right ventricle Letter B here is called left ventricle. Letter C is the right auricle and letter D is the left auricle. Now notice here, teacher, about uh, the orientation or the sides of the heart. We notice that the heart is divided into two parts, two sides, the right side and the left side. And pay attention here that the right of the heart is the opposite to your right. Okay, because we will, uh, we have to imagine that we are uh, putting this heart in front of us. This is the right of the heart, and this is the left. Make sure you don't forget these notes at all. So this is the right side, and this is the left side. Now let's continue. We have here letter E refers to a blood vessel called aorta or aorta. Letter F refers to the pulmonary artery we see it it's going out of the right ventricle now letter G is for the inferior vena cava which comes uh, from the uh, right auricle letter H is for the superior vena cava now this is this doesn't uh, this isn't very clear here but letter H uh, is connected also to the right auricle but from behind the heart okay now and letter i finally are the pulmonary veins connected to the left auricle as we see in this document so if you want to name the uh, parts of the heart from a to i a right ventricle b left ventricle c right auricle d left auricle e aorta f pulmonary artery g inferior vena cava H, superior vena cava, and I, pulmonary vein. I'm going to explain later on what do we mean by inferior and superior vena cava. Now, I hope you copy these notes on your copy box. Now, let's go to part B. Classify these structures that we named into two categories, cavities and blood vessels. First of all, the word cavity means room or chamber. Uh, it's an empty uh, place where it has walls around it. So this is a cavity. We want to classify these into cavities and blood vessels. Some of them are cavities and some of them are blood vessels. So we can classify them as we like, but I classified them in a table. So cavities, blood vessels. The ventricles and auricles are the cavities of the heart. So the heart, we notice that it has four cavities, right ventricle, left ventricle, and right auricle, left auricle. While the blood vessels, we have aorta, pulmonary artery, vena cava, of course there are two parts, inferior and superior, and pulmonary vein. 
Just here a note, teacher, that pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein, the word pulmonary here refers to the lung. So when we read the word pulmonary, we know that it connects the heart to the lungs. So when we say pulmonary artery, it's an artery that connects the heart to the lungs, and pulmonary vein is the vein that connects the lungs to the heart. So here is the answer of document of part B. Let's continue studying the structure of the heart. As we see here, the heart is a hollow muscle, okay, if we look here through this uh, magic loop, if you want, it is hollow, it's empty from the inside, empty, but it has certain structures that we're going to learn about, okay, now, it is made of a muscle called the myocardium, it's a special muscle, and as we see from the outside, it has a layer of lipids, of fats, these yellow things, and of course, it has... Uh, vessels that nourish the heart itself. These vessels are called coronary arteries. The coronary arteries, and we're going to learn about them later on, they feed the cells of the heart muscle. They bring nutrients and oxygen gas to the heart itself. Now, let's learn more about the parts of the heart. We said here, these are the two auricles, and since this is the right side, so this is the right auricle, while this is the left auricle. And under the auricles are the ventricles, so this is the right ventricle, and this is the left ventricle. Now let's look at the vessels, and these are a little tricky, but we have to uh, uh, study them later on. First of all, you have to, to study or to remember always that the right ventricle is connected to the pulmonary artery. So always the pulmonary artery comes out of the right ventricle, while the, the vessel that comes out of the left ventricle is the Aorta. So remember, arteries, which are aorta, which are aorta and pulmonary artery, are always connected to the ventricles. Okay, the right ventricle uh, is connected to the pulmonary artery, the left ventricle to the aorta. Now let's go to the veins. Here, the right auricle is connected to the vena cava. The vena cava is divided into two parts: the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Now, why are they called like this? Because the superior vena cava teacher, superior means above or higher, okay? Superior vena cava is the vein that collects the blood from the organs over the heart, above the heart, that are above the heart, like the brain, the neck, uh, the face, uh, all these organs that above the heart. Why? The inferior vena cava, inferior means below, uh, is the vein that collects the blood from all the organs beneath the heart, like the stomach, the liver, the intestine, etc. Okay, now let's go here to the final vessel, which is the pulmonary veins. These pulmonary veins are connected to the left auricle. So these parts, you have to memorize them by referring to document E in your book. You have to memorize them really well. Now, let's go to the inside structure. We said that the heart from the inside is a hollow muscle. It has certain structures that we're going to learn about. But first, let us review the parts that we learned just now. We'll start with one. As we said, what is this? This is the inferior vena cava. Number two, it is the right ventricle. Okay, number three, above the ventricle, there is an auricle. And since it's the right side, so it is the right auricle. Here, it is the same vein connected also to the right auricle, but it's from the up, uh, upside or, or the above uh, part. So it is the superior vena cava. Now let's go to the left side. Uh, the left side, number seven here is the left auricle. Beneath it is the left ventricle. Here, the artery connected to the left ventricle is the aorta and uh, the, uh, here is the artery connected to the right ventricle, so it is the pulmonary artery. Number eight are the veins connected to the left auricle, of course they are the pulmonary vein. Now the additional part here that we can't see from the outside is this muscle that, that is like a wall that separates between the two ventricles, it is called a septum or if you want to be more precise, it is the interventricular septum. It separates the right ventricle from the left ventricle. It has a very important role doing this.